and hello welcome back everyone to uh, this uh, youtube videos uh so gonna continue where i kind of left off or where we left off the last video i kind of uh, showed you some of the basics how to place a graph down and how to uh, navigate around these windows okay uh, so some of this uh, some of these things may be a little bit fast because I'm introducing a lot of things, I did not go to the basics of arrays, addition, subtraction, variables, whatever. But uh, I'm going straight into the you know, part where we can make stuff happen, okay? So uh, there's still a lot to cover, but I'm going to cover very, you know, just want to cover the basics uh, of how to read an audio file and play with uh, some, some of the frequency tools you have here. They are relevant, especially like graphs and charts and all, what have you. Okay, so uh, the last time we, we talked about uh, changing, uh, setting some of the graph stuff. Uh, all right, some of the graph stuff, like uh, making a little bit of a graph here and how this will uh, put in, uh, be put into the block diagram. But of course, we need our input data next. So how are we going to have our input data? So that's what we're going to discuss this video and hopefully we will have a waveform here a waveform here of what uh you know the the rick Astley song i just sung uh, it's a it's a rick roll yeah the rick roll i just sung the last video and that that's hopefully what uh what we want to come up with this video so remember we for this for this graphing vi here you just right click go to graphics and sound go to sound and go to input you will go and see this uh, thing called sound input read.vi. Okay. So what are the pieces of data you need to give it? Okay. So you if you need to just press the context help and hover over your sound vi and then it will show this thing over here. Okay. So what are you supposed to feed it? You're supposed to feed it uh there's a task ID here, there's a number of sample channels per channel, blah blah blah. I'm not gonna touch that. But what you do need to give, uh, it, it will give an output of data, alright? Uh, it will give an output of data and you need to give it some input, like where is the sound file going to be? So just go here and you go and click, uh, okay? Click on this sound VI, uh, okay? Go to the outside uh, and you see this thing called task ID, alright? Okay, oops, I think I showed you the wrong VI the last time round. Okay, no wonder it looks so funny, but never mind. Okay, let me go through it again. Uh, go to functions, graphics and sound. Go to sound and go to files, not input. Nah? Okay, not input. Go to uh, files. Okay, and you go to simple read. Okay, sound file read simple dot vi. Okay, because you're supposed to read a sound file. Not You're not supposed to get input from your microphone. Okay, so what I gave you just now, I think was supposed to be for microphone. Uh, not uh, not for the files. Okay, so let's use a context help again just like we did the last time. And this time, okay, now now uh, you can see. Okay, you see number of sa uh, samples per channel, position mode, position offset, blah, blah, blah. The only two things you need to take note to actually get this to work the simple way, okay? One is a path. Okay, this variable is known as a path. And it will, you will tell uh, lab view where is your sound file. And then the output will be data from that sound file. Okay, so it's a pretty simple way. And this is how most uh, lab view, uh, lab view, uh, you know, these little boxes work. They call them VIs, virtual instruments. But I mean, what you're designing here is a VI, but there are VIs, there are like, you know, little programs within each of these VIs, pre-configured uh, for you. Uh, so uh, they call them VIs as well. Because if you click on this, and you can, uh, you can actually go in and show all the stuff inside this VI itself. Okay. Okay. If you double click, you will see this. Uh, if you double click this VI, you will see this whole front panel here. All right. Just like you have a front panel here, so this is actually a VI within your VI. It's like Inception stuff there. If you click Control E, you will see all this. Another uh, simple block diagram here, which will show you all, right, all, all of the necessary data within your sound file simple read VI. So this is how you would uh, you would do your uh, thing. 
Okay, so this is how your sound VI works. Okay, again, if you do this, uh, you, okay, you can't quite double click this one. This one's a bit different, but at least for this VI, it works like that. Okay, so how can you uh, put in uh, path data? So, okay, if you hover over this uh, sound, sound VI, simple sound uh, VI, Okay. Again, I, I showed you if you double click, you, you will see a completely new VI or virtual instrument there. Alright, so that's why it's called VI. Hover over it and then you will see all these uh, little funny thingies jutting out. Okay, okay. Go, go. When, when you see all these little th funny things jutting out, okay, go to the path, go to the one that says path, you will be able to see this little um, uh, flag or little bit of uh, uh, text. That tells you okay what what each string is supposed to do. Okay, go to the one saying path, okay, right click, and then you can, there are three options for you at this in this uh, top. So look focus on the, the top three options. One says uh, create constant, the other says create control, the other one says create indicator. So what, what does each of these do? So I will tell you about create constant and create control first. So if you have uh, something called create constant, okay, you will be able to see that okay, I have a a file, uh, I have a kind of a box here which I can enter some text. So this this uh this is one way of inputting your data. You give, you give uh you enter a string of text and then you tell LabVIEW manually where your sound file is, where your path is. Now, I don't really want to do it that way, okay. So I'll just delete. So I, I just drag this whole thing. I drag a box over all these lines and I press the delete button and I'll clean it all up. So if I want to uh, do it in a more elegant way, I will use this thing called create control. Because uh, this create control, you will have this uh, path box here. And what you notice inside your front panel, you will see this uh, little, um, little uh, input uh, directory saying path. And what, what's more convenient, you have this open folder here, which you can just click, and then you'll be able to see, all right, uh, I'm able to go to my file directories and slowly search for my file. And this is a much better way of doing things. So I'll go to my GitHub, and then I will put this uh, audio sample too. And that will be my uh, file over there. Now, can I try putting the data straight to the graph? Okay. Now, if, if you notice, uh, you hover over the part that says data and then uh, lab, your cursor will change to this uh, spool looking thing here. You drag it out and you try to uh, put it, you can drag it to the part that says graph. Okay, for now it works. Okay, for now it works. So, um, but uh, let, let's try, let's try. Let's try running this and then wow, voila. There you, you see that uh, now, uh, your lab, lab view was able to take in a wave data and then it was able to put this out into a graph put this out as some data into a graph format okay so that's how this thing works now you can do a similar thing with using the chart as well okay so I'm just uh, going through some stuff there's a chart which you can do here now you can also try dragging it now you see you can you can go to this line here and you you drag you can drag it okay you can drag this to the chart as well all right and then what you do after that uh, to make this uh, uh, graph appear press the run button either here or inside the block diagram either is fine so if you press the run button you will be able to see some of the uh, data that comes out so you can use uh, either chart or graph in this case because there's no like real time data coming out. But yeah, that's basically that's basically how you get uh, rough waveforms to go from a sound file to go into uh, your lab view charts or diagrams. Okay. So this is me like singing and playing for fifteen seconds, Rick rolling. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's that's basically how this works. Okay. Okay, so uh, as you can see, uh, getting getting a wave file to be displayed as a 
a waveform and on a graph is actually pretty simple in that view. So again, if you want to uh, go th go and get a graph, you just right click on your front panel, go to graph, and you will see this thing called waveform chart and waveform graph. You can do both like I did here. All right. So it's pretty intuitive. I mean, at first it's not intuitive, but when you start drawing lines between these boxes, it gets more intuitive. All right. So what what the lab view does? Uh, you you have to uh, to read a wave file uh, with characteristic frequency. Go to the sound panel and then go to files, and then you'll see a something called simple read file. Of course, you have a simple write file as well. You can do that, no problem. But it's another video for another time. Uh, if you want to do some uh, sound mixing, you want to uh, do all that kind of stuff you can do that as well yeah so uh, you want to you can do that but that's for another time uh, okay so if you uh, to get this whole thing running all right um, to get this whole thing running you just press the run button here and then you will see the waveforms actually come out all right so that's basically how to get it to work now let's say let's say I want to do something more interesting, like a fast Fourier transform, or some some sort of frequency based analysis. How do I do that? So okay, first thing first, I will get a graph out. I'll just get a graph out here. So I want to display a Fourier, fast Fourier transform, right? Fast Fourier transform. Okay. So I will drag this uh, graph here and I will scale it accordingly. This one's a bit easy. So I have this graph called fast Fourier transform. That's where I want my data output to be. So if I want to uh, do fast Fourier transform, okay, uh, right click on the block diagram and go straight to not waveform but signal processing. Okay. Now again, I'm going to show you again. Right click here. Uh, and go uh, under functions you go down to this part called signal processing and under signal processing you will see a lot of these things here go to the one that says transform okay and then go to the one that says FFT which is fast Fourier transform now I'm gonna do it one more time functions go down to uh, signal processing and go to transforms you will see this uh, fast Fourier transform here you will also have an inverse FFT, inverse fast Fourier transform, in case you want to convert everything back. Uh, but I'll just show you the fast Fourier transform here. So this is what your fast Fourier transform is. If you're not sure what it does, go to context help, show the context help window, hover over the fast Fourier transform. All right. So what does it do? It computes the fast Fourier transform of the input sequence X, where X is some array or matrix. And then it it will output another um, another uh, whole array which is X uh, size X and then it will uh, you know give it an array okay so basically what you can do is this uh, you try and uh, wire this thing in so wire this thing in here into the part that says X so again uh, I try again Okay, now if you ever if you ever get stuck uh, in here, and you are trying to get out of this spooling mode, just press escape. Okay, so I'm gonna try again, um, and I'm gonna wire this thing to X, and then this thing I'm going to get it out to the fast Fourier transform. So you can see it's a pretty simple. Uh, doing a fast Fourier transform is pretty simple. So. Uh, you get the data from this wave file, this array data. You push it into the fast Fourier transform, and then you uh, push it out as a graph. Okay, so now it's going to show you this this weird thing here. So it doesn't doesn't look right at all. <laughs> okay, so something is obviously a little bit off here. So there is a little bit more of uh, a thing you need to do. Okay, so what? What this thing is you need to do is called the uh, index array. Okay, because uh, you're supposed to see a lot of uh, frequencies that are showing up here, but you only see you know one straight line and uh, 
the time or the x-axis this is the bottom is supposed to be called frequency bins okay the bottom is supposed to be called frequency bins and it is su supposed to go across uh, all your data you should be able to see a, f a spectrum of sorts but this is not the correct spectrum so how do you get it done you basically need to have this thing called indexing array so I'm going to break this part up I'm going to delete okay and you'll see this thing is broken here there are like broken lines meaning to say the fast Fourier transform that part is broken so I'm going to press this click this and delete so I want to uh, okay introduce you to this thing called a uh, what do you call that yeah index array okay so what do we do go to array and you will see this thing called index array put it here okay so it will need some data you need some data from here I'll get it from the wave file and after that uh, I will wire it to the fast Fourier transform then let's see what happens okay so now uh, you will see that this uh, fast Fourier transform is able to show you uh, amplitude versus all the frequency bins now if you're not sure do go and look at the website uh, okay one this is for index array function I'll put this in the description below and this is what the arrays and clusters are about and okay fast Fourier transform lab view okay so uh, this is here Okay, where is this? All right, so this is this is what uh, how you you find all these things within the fast Fourier transform. You'll notice over here that there are like a, there are there's a positive and a negative part. Okay, you'll notice that this graph looks very much symmetrical. This graph looks very much symmetrical because. Uh, you know in your sine wave in your sine wave or it's called sine waves they're going to be you, you look at this look at this waveform they're going to be amplitudes that are positive and amplitudes that are negative right so since it's oscillating you actually see frequencies for the positive side positive part on the left hand side and for the negative part on the right hand side so you actually see a mirror image of this uh, frequency bins so it's amplitude versus frequency bins all right so this is how you uh, basically get a uh, fast Fourier transform working. So just a reminder, in case you've forgotten, uh, to get the Fourier transform, fast Fourier transform, go to signal processing when you right click the, when you right click in the block VI diagram, go to uh, this part that says uh, transforms, go to that part and say FFT. So that is what you need. If uh, you need to look for your indexing array to make it work, go to functions, go to array, and go to this part saying index array. And if you're not sure what all these are, don't worry about it yet. Hopefully, uh, if I have time in the uh, coming videos, then I can explain why you need to do all these special tricks to get uh, the fast Fourier transform to work. Okay, but um, that's basically it. Okay, so this is just uh, some introduction to, to find, help you find where the tools are. All right, and uh, just the bare bones of how to get it to work without too much explanation. All right, uh, and of course, uh, yeah, these are some things you can do with your waveform. And if you want to look at how to interpret these kind of graphs, uh, you can uh, take a look at this, uh, this page over here by uh, National Instruments. So I'll put this into the description. All right. So that's all for this uh, video. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys again. Bye-bye.